it's all planning. And I want people to realize, you know, the poor can get rich. There's only, if there's only a couple of choices and then time, right? I guess it's choices, consistency, and time. That's the formula, right? At, at, at a simple level. Alrighty, folks, I have personally had enough of doom porn. There is plenty of headlines to scare you. World War III, recession, depression, crash, crash, crash. We're going to skip all that nonsense, and we're going to talk about something you should care about. We're going to talk about personal finance and how the poor get rich. And we're going to have this conversation with Dion and Matt. Dion, how you doing, man? Howdy. I'm doing great. This this correlates really closely to my live stream last night where I talked about there are showers and growers when it comes to wealth. <laughs> when it comes to wealth, <laughs> our mind's clean. I'm talking about for the first 40 years of my life, I thought you show your wealth. You have a nice house, right? I got a house with a picket fence, raised the kids on a lake, nice car. I had an Eddie Bauer uh, expedition and uh, I was broke. Could barely afford payments on everything. And then the last 10 years before retiring, I grew it. No one could see the reserves. No one could see the saving for investment. Nobody could see the rental properties. So if you want to be the people who are poor that want to get rich, you need to stop trying to show your wealth and learn how to grow it. I uh, I just want the audience to be completely transparent. The title of this video is going to be Personal Finance. There are showers and growers. Because of Dion, I that made me chuckle. Hopefully, it made you laugh as well. Matt, how you doing, man? I'm doing great. Yeah, I mean, I call them posers or doers, but whatever. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But yeah. yeah, I mean, I think I, that's exactly right. I mean, at the end of the day, you know, it's uh, we all have that choice to make, and you know, there's the guys that uh, appear like they're really successful, and then there's the guys that are actually are really successful. And, you know, as humbly as we can say it, you know, when Dion came to visit, there probably wasn't a burger joint that we walked into where we weren't the two richest guys in the burger joint, but you couldn't tell we fit in just fine. Um, and that's, those are the kind of people that, you know, I'm not sure if it's necessarily always the millionaire next door, but, you know, cause there are some things that will add to our lives. You know, Dion does it in experiences and trips and, you know, I'll do it in the form of uh, some nice carbon fiber, something sitting in my driveway. Um, but again, I think it, at, at its core, it's, you know, show me what you've done. I was in a town meeting last night, very briefly. I was in a town meeting last night trying to get a driveway approved. And I am the worst at those because we all know that they're super political yeah. and I'm horrible at that. Yeah. You're not good at that. You I'm the put worst that. at that because nothing sets me off more than a poser. And so somebody said, well, but what if there is a problem with how you did the driveway? I said, Based on what? But what if there's a problem? No, I understand. But the person that I hired to do this has 25,000 driveways under his belt. How many driveways have you done where you've seen that there's a problem? What I'd like to understand is I hired an expert that has this as a craft and knows what they're doing. Mm -hmm. I can, I appreciate that you have feelings about it, but do you have more than feelings about it? Do you have an understanding of something that we're missing that you believe that the way that this driveway is set up, that it will fail. Yeah. And the answer always is I, I pose it that way every time. Usually they get offended, but I'm sorry. I don't have any other way to pose it. Yeah. Facts or feelings, doers or showers. Yeah. Builders or talkers. I mean, there's a lot yeah. of things. I just love this idea of showers and growers fun one. Cause it made me laugh out loud, which is awesome. But it is, it is, it is real. And, and I go back to my mistakes in my twenties and thirties and I was all shower, right? I'm the idiot who finally got a full-time job and bought a car that was two X's income. Why? Cause the <laughs> auto lot approved it. I had no idea what I was doing. Um, I'm the guy who, you know, went 12 years or whatever and spent every penny he made. Cause I thought that was money was for, I thought I, I didn't save anything. Right. Mm -hmm. I, I was, I was like, Hey, I made more money. Let's spend more money. It was all showing. And it wasn't until I lost all of that money in the stock market that it was like, Hey, this, this, and, and oh, by the way, I'm not getting any younger. Um, and I, then I looked at what my parents and my grandparents, aunts and uncles were going through. I'm like, I don't want any of that. Right. I don't want any of that stress. I didn't want my life, my life 
to downgrade as I got older. That was really, that was the big thing for me is realizing time is undefeated. And if I don't change my behavior right now and start growing, that I'm going to have to downgrade when I get older. What a disaster that would be. Mm -hmm. Dion, throwers and growers, I like it. Well, thanks. And and it was very similar for me. It wasn't about life downgrading. I think it was because I spent so much time thinking I'm going to work until I die. Right? Mm -hmm. I said that right. for decades mm -hmm. in my life because I was pretty much planning on it. I thought I need a house with a payment. I need a vehicle with a payment. That means insurance, more expensive upkeep, the overtime, the hours, raising kids, all of that so that I could look successful Yeah. In instead of be successful. And, and I've had coworkers, people who worked for me at the company say often, how come you don't have a million dollar house? Like that's some status symbol to have a very expensive house. And my response often was, I can buy a million dollar house because that was their point as I was the president of the company. I made enough and they knew I had cash flow from something, but I said I could buy a million dollar house because I haven't like I'm, I'm growing wealth by living in a duplex. I'm not showing it. I'm not inviting a bunch of people over to my fancy house because I live in the side of a duplex, but then I'll have decades where I never have to work. Yeah, it's, it's just, it's all planning. And I want people to realize, you know, the poor can get rich. There's only, if there's only a couple of choices and then time, right? I guess it's choices, consistency, and time. That's the formula, right? At, at, at a simple level. What do you think, Matt? I totally agree. Yeah. I mean, I think that, you know, the, I always joke around with my friends. I was like, the the most wealthy thing about me is my house. Like I don't have anything else. Like we drive, I drive, you know, it's been well documented. I drive S boxes, you know, 20 year old vehicles. Sometimes they have heat. Sometimes they don't, <laughs> you know, and, and, you know, even Ashley, she drives a eight year old minivan. Like we're mm -hmm. just, we, you know, that's not how we live. How we like to live is we want, you know, it's tougher to vacation with four kids. And so, you know, from you know, with school schedules and things like that. So we have a house where we get to be that place where other families get to bring their kids and they get to go swim in the pool and they get to have a big, huge backyard to play in. And so, you know, I think that, I think that Dion's exactly right. I think that, you know, the, the tough, the tough transition for all of us was getting out of growth mode. That was a tough transition for all of us was getting out of growth mode. I know I struggle with it. You know, I know Dion doesn't really struggle with it anymore, <laughs> but he, but he struggled with it for that time from the perspective that he had to get to the number where he was really comfortable. He's like, you know what? I can walk and I'm a hundred percent good. Cause we all could have retired earlier than we did. We all could have. Right. Mm -hmm. The issue is, is that we held on for as long as we could, because we wanted to know that we knew that we know that we knew that we were a hundred percent, not going to ever have to go back to anything ever again. And that we weren't going to have to downgrade our lifestyle. It was a combination of the two. So I yeah. think that that's exactly right. I think that as people look at what they're trying to do and what they're trying to accomplish with their life, it's the idea that, um, you know, kind of like Christian's idea of if you buy it, you got to hold on to it. And <laughs> you can't you lose it. This, yeah. if you get this lifestyle, I got to hold on to it. Like I don't, I, I am so beyond broken now. I would be useless as a W2 employee to anybody. Yeah. I think one of the things that's really that we really should acknowledge is when you're transitioning or, you, or you've had that aha moment, right? That's what I call them aha moments that you need to you, you need to change something, you know, going forward. Sometimes going from shower to grower mode, you got to go backwards, right? The, sure. the most obvious example for me is Anna Kelly, who at the time had the big house in Texas and two kids. She realized that she was not set up well for the future. So she sold the big house, moved into the basement with her in-laws and then house hacked a fourplex, you know, lived upstairs in Pennsylvania where it snows. And, and, and oh, by the way, number three was on the way, you know, Dion talks about moving off the lake and, and turning it into a rental so that he could qualify in a couple of years. Folks going from shower to grower mode, it's hard for everybody. We've sure. made mistakes, but don't beat yourself up. Just make new decisions. Dion? Well, two things. One, one of the big mental shift from going from a wealth shower to a wealth grower is the, the showers think monthly payment. Yeah. They think if I could finance this, it looks like I have more than I do. And then the grower thinks if I can get my monthly income 
to where that month can buy almost anything I want, then I'm free. And you, ha you have to think of it, when you first started investing, did you have a financed car? Did you have an old car? Now, look at what you make in a month, right? My profit is around 21,000. My numbers are small enough to still be just completely transparent. It's attainable. People can hear my numbers and I, I whiteboard it. That, that would buy almost every vehicle I've ever owned until maybe the last couple of years when I started doing stupid vehicles. But the second thing is, uh, you mentioned Christian. I'm going over to see Cody this afternoon. So I'm um, driving across the state, going to hang out with Cody. He went into investing mode as a as a shower. He and, and I, I don't I don't want to call him out on this. I'm going to say it with him in the room too. When he first started, he was, I'm 20. I have 30 rentals. I'm 21. I have 400 and blah blah blah. Whatever his growth thing was, got on a bunch of podcasts and everything. He's realized in the last year, that's not where freedom comes from. He's not a he's he's not a shower now. He's growing. He's downsizing his portfolio. He's stepping backwards. He's getting rid of a lot of the partnerships. He's buying his way out or selling his way out of the partnerships to have that freedom that comes from owning the right amount of assets. And he's learned that growing the wealth, <clears throat> even though you can grow wealth by showing it in some realms, like like how successful I am, you want to copy this, right? Like that was the start. I could see that in the beginning. He's not doing that anymore. I'm, I'm talking to him today because his portfolio is getting smaller and increasing his cash flow. Yeah, getting smaller and getting better by yes. all the metrics that count, right? Again, a lot of the things that, uh, again, one of the reasons where I think bigger pockets went wrong was they started all about showing, right? I did blah, 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 blah in two years. That's, you know, that's not where most people are. Where is one rental at a time? It's just, you know, one at a time. It's okay. You know, six, nine, 12. Two years between acquisitions doesn't matter. Every step forward uh, is growth mode. So uh, I just love this idea of growth uh, versus showing uh, because I think I I do think the the poor right kind of this whole story poor versus rich. You, there's a lot of folks that the, the the line that I remember from Millionaire Next Door, which really was my first finance book, right in page one I think it is might be page two, talks about big hat no cattle. Right. Big hat, no cattle. And that has always struck me. I think the first time I read that, I was like 25 or 26. And I'm like, oh, my God. I'm big hat. I got no assets. I got no nothing behind me. And it, it, it was one of you just never know what's going to be that eye opening moment. So let's talk about why it's so hard, uh, Matt, to go from, you know, flexing right today, especially right. Think about social media. When the three of us were coming up and we individually made our transition from showing to growing. Social media wasn't a thing. Shit, the internet wasn't a thing. Yeah. And um, it's now in our face all the time with everybody showing. Mm -hmm. So let's just acknowledge that and, and and talk about, you know, how uncomfortable it might be to step back. Well, I mean, that's certainly, it certainly is very uncomfortable. I actually said no to a deal this week because that guy does, that guy's a shower, not a grower. We literally looked at the numbers and I ran the numbers. I, I said, I said, Hey, I, it was great meeting him as an investor. He's a super smart guy and he does, he does some beautiful projects. And I said, yeah, give me a couple of days, do some due diligence and I'll come back to you. And so I did the couple of days of due diligence and I went back to him and I said, Hey, uh, uh, I got to say no. Yeah. And he's like, why? I said, it's a negative carry of 2000 bucks a month on the best type of financing I can get. Yeah. He goes, but look at the project. I go, uh what <laughs> yeah oh it's so beautiful all yeah. the updates and all of this yeah. uh, and then no thanks and then i'm in the room with one of his agents and she's done de i've done deals with a number of deals with her as well she's one of my agents and she goes matt but hey, these units are always just so beautiful i said here's the crazy thing i said well i value your opinion and it is really important do you know what the most important opinion is my bankers yeah. Because he's going to bankroll the next thing for me. And he's going to be the one that says, yeah, Matt, we know that you're really fiscally responsible. So anytime you call us and ask us for money, we're going to likely give it to you. Right. And that's, I think the thing that most people have to come to terms with is that I, I don't know about you guys, but I get sick when I have to say no to a deal. It makes me inside. It makes me sick because mm -hmm. I'm like, I believe that I'm a better operator. I've got a 20 year track record of proving it. So I believe I'm a right. better operator than most of the guys around. me. So I'm having to then admit to myself, Hey, you know what? This project's so bad. Don't get hubris. Don't think you're the man. Uh -huh. Don't think you're above all. Right. 
Because yeah. that's the problem that I went into is it's like, I can fix anything. Well, technically I can. Technically I can fix anything, but how long am I willing to write that $2,000 check to show how well I can fix something? And so that's where like the more Dion and Mike version of me comes yeah. into the equation and goes, don't do that. Yeah. yeah it's, fu it's funny you bring that up because I love saying no to deals. Yeah. Right. I, I'm, uh, I think it was Ted Williams. I yeah. think Ted Williams said this in his book, or I heard him interviewed, right? Ted Williams, who don't know who he is, is arguably the best baseball hitter in the history of the major leagues. Yes. And he talked about his mindset going to the plate. And basically, he knew the strike zone. I think there were like nine, you know, nine quadrants. Yep. Nine quadrants. And he's like, I hit the best in these three. Yep. So I'm swinging at those three, at least until I get down 0 2 and I have less options. Then he has to open up and, and be you know less selective. Yeah, that's how I kind of look at it. And and to be clear, this was not Mike Zuber 2010. Mike mm -hmm. Zuber 2010 was doing every single deal he could because he was in growth mode. Right. He was going on. Today I'm in chill mode. Mm -hmm. So I actually look. I actually feel great when I say no because I only want to do the one great deal a year, and uh, I don't. I don't have my ego wrapped up in any more than all yeah. of these these chasing numbers. So I don't know, Dion, what do you think? Do you like saying no, or do you get nervous when you say no to a deal? So it's, it's funny that you guys are like dichotomous. You, you got, you love, you hate to say no. You love to say no. I don't like to do deals. I don't want to say yes or no. And I, so <laughs> Lord, let's, let's look at the, the how chronology easy of it. That is. Yeah. Just yeah. be in the middle. Ah. I'm well, sorry. No, would, that would that make you a libertarian, Dion? You remember our conversation. Would that make you a libertarian? Was that easy for you, Dion? Not picking a side? Well, I picked the side of, have you um, heard of Eat the Frog? Of course. Okay. So Eat the Frog. It's And that became a gym thing. They mm -hmm. do mobile gyms and everything. So the idea is if, if you want to eat the dessert, the thing that tastes good, you got to eat the frog first. You got to get rid of the, the bad thing. The deals to me are the frogs. To reach financial freedom, I've purchased eight properties yeah. in a decade, right? You guys have had... I want to say months where you've done eight deals, but it's probably been a quarter where you've done eight quarters. Deals. Yeah. yeah. Quarters Quarters where you've done eight deals. I mean, you fit, you flipped 56 homes in two years. So yeah, you're, you're, you're quarters. There. Yeah. And eight to me is I've had that thing of, I don't know if I want that many. Mm, right. I want, I want less, right. So I wanted that, but Matt made a really good point um, with the growing growers versus the showers when it comes to the bank. So, yeah. so think about having a business opportunity. Somebody comes to you and says, I've got the widget. I, I, this is going to say, I can prove proof of concept is here. I just need your buy-in. So you go to the bank, you have a nice house that you've financed and you have a big couple of vehicles that you financed with your spouse. And you tell the bank, I've got a business idea. I want to borrow a bunch of money to do it. Bank's going to laugh you out of the building. Probably. But yep. if you've been growing uh, uh, so that you, you can, it looks like, you, you know, you might not look as successful to the average person. But the bank sees a personal financial statement, mm -hmm. cash flow, a balance sheet. Like you actually understand what these words mean and you can articulate it to the bank. They'll be like, well, how much do you want for that business? I think if we double the amount that you're borrowing, you can increase your return. Like yeah. it's a very different conversation. Yep. Yeah, I love that. At the end of the day, folks, closest growing versus showing out. I do think you've got to go from thinking about buying to investing. I do think a lot of folks need to understand what a balance sheet is. I think even more important is something called the cash flow statement, which nobody talks about. Mm -hmm. uh, I think too many people are focused on the income statement, like what can I get approved for? That's the wrong way to think about. That's a showing mentality. Mm -hmm. um, the real value is the balance sheet. And if you really want to get good, it's the cash flow statement. Uh, so folks, these are things you should do. Stop being a shower. Be a grower if you want to do personal finance right. Matt, where can they find you? Lumberjack Landlord on YouTube and Instagram and my favorite new series that was inspired by Dion because he's such an amazing teacher. He's been teaching people for an entire, I don't know, I'd say three years how to be lazy, but really amped up his game since he retired of here's how to be extra lazy. And so now I just want to show people what the cost of lazy is so they can make the decision if lazy is for them. Wow. Tune in for that. The cost of being lazy. Dion, mm -hmm. where can people find you? Uh, right here on YouTube, motivating people like Matt to give up the drive. <laughs> <laughs> I love that, guys. You both are amazing. Thank you for being here. Thanks, Mike. Yeah.